Hi everybody, this is Michelle Skelly, Development Director of Tennis Wiz, and today I wanted to share with you a brief presentation on the structure of the Tennis Wiz lesson plan. For those of you who have been able to attend one of our workshops, you'll know that at the beginning we go through the process of creating a lesson, and then we also have the opportunity to talk about the different parts of the Tennis Wiz lesson plans. Since many of you have not been able to attend a workshop, we wanted to bring this information to you. Even though the lesson plans are self-explanatory, I'm hoping that after this presentation, you'll have a better idea of why the lessons are structured the way that they are and why we have put in the different parts that we have. As I'm sure most of you know by now, all of the lesson plans have the same structure. They're all themed into a specific story for the day as we go on our adventure. Each lesson begins with a group warm-up, and that warm-up can be found in the manual. And then there are four separate activities. At the beginning of the lesson, the coach shows the four activities while telling the story. And then as a class, we do the activities together. And then after a short break, we do them all again. All of the activities are linked to games in the games manual so that you can reference them there. At different parts of the lesson, we have rhymes that mark the structure of the lesson and also support motivation for the kids. And of course, every lesson has an educational component with our set for school skills. The structure of the lesson, as I mentioned, is the same every time. First, the coach shows the activities. Then, as a class, we do them. Then, we do them again. This structure is based on how kids learn. They are, of course, very visual, and they need repetition to improve. For young kids, it's better to do the same activity twice for shorter periods of time rather than once for a longer period of time. Kids also like to know what's coming ahead. It creates a sense of security for them. As many of you know, we looked to children's TV programming for inspiration. In the following clip of Dora the Explorer, you can see how the adventure is fully explained before it even starts. Look, Boots, I made you a valentine for Valentine's Day. Be mine, Valentine. Oh, no! My valentine! The wind blew the valentine away. Let's get it back. Let's get it back. Mac knows the way. He says that first we need to swing across the bee mine vines, then get over the think pink pond, and then into the heart of the jungle. Will you help? Vamanos, let's go. Woven into each lesson are the rhymes. They mark different times of the lesson and also provide motivation for the kids for the different things that we're asking them to try to do. The first rhyme is the ready rhyme, and that one is part of the warm-up. It gets kids excited to play, and it marks the beginning of the adventure. Once the kids learn that, they know that once they say the ready rhyme, that the class is going to be ready to start. Next comes the learn and practice rhyme. We say that after we've gone through all four activities one time, we take a bit of a break and then we get ready to do them again. And the learn and practice rhyme encourages perseverance. If you've taught these classes, you'll know that sometimes kids will struggle with the activities the first time around. And it's really great to be able to watch them improve just a few minutes later when they go through it a second time. The second set of rhymes come at the end of the lesson. The first one is the celebration rhyme, where we celebrate everybody's accomplishments. It is important for the kids to feel like they were successful, even if they are in different places developmentally. It's also really great to be able to mark that the class is over so that the kids know that their time with you is done and it's time for them to um, say goodbye and thank you and um, to go meet mom and dad. 
The thank you rhyme is one that's optional, but I think is really important. I don't think kids can ever say thank you enough, especially to their parents for bringing them there. And I do find that parents really do appreciate it when the kids do tell them thank you at the end of the lesson. I often get my class together, I bring them in real close, and I tell them after we do our celebration rhyme to go thank mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or whomever brought them there to go give them a hug and tell them thank you for bringing me here today. It is important for kids to learn at an early age to thank people for the opportunities that they have been given. We do believe that all the classes should begin and end together for the kids that helps create the, a sense of belonging for them. And also it really does help with the overall structure that they know that there is a specific beginning and ending to every class. It starts the class together and we work on skills that they still need to develop. We like to do the same warm up because one, there's a familiarity to it. Kids like to know what they will be doing. For them, it creates a sense of security. There's also a level of consistency. These are all fundamental motor skills that they need to work on. And we've also included a lot of opposites to help kids retain the skills. We begin with all the kids and the coaches and possibly the parents in a circle. The coach asks, are you ready for today? And the kids answer, yes, we're ready to go play. We march to the right, march to the left, jump forwards, and very carefully jump backwards. The coach asks, are we ready for today? The kids answer, yes, we're ready to go play. Then we shuffle to the right, shuffle to the left, step in, step out. Are you ready for today? The kids answer, yes, we're ready to go play. We go down and get little. We stretch up and get big. We make big circles with our right arm, big circles with our left arm. Finally, one more time, the coach asks, are you ready for today? And the kids will answer, yes, we're ready to go play. If you feel you need to add variations because your students have improved, you can do things like skipping instead of marching, hopping instead of jumping, um, or you can make figure eights in the air instead of circles. We do recommend that whatever you do, you do it the same way every single time. So again, the kids know what will be coming when they first walk out on court. And just so that you know, the overview of the whole lesson can be found at the bottom of all of our lesson plans. So never feel that you have to remember all of the rhymes or what order you need to do everything. We have it all there for you at the bottom of every single lesson. We created Tennis Whiz lessons based around a story. So the story could be the hook. The story could be what captures their attention. So you, the coach, don't have to be the Pied Piper of three-year-olds. It's very important to show the story, to demonstrate it. Don't just tell them what the story is going to be. I wanted to give you some pointers for telling the story that I've developed in teaching my own Tennis Whiz classes. It's important to know the story, but you only need to give the kids the basic elements. You don't need to tell them the whole story. When demonstrating, I always have the kids in the same spot. They know that when they're in that spot, it's time for them to watch and listen. Remember, as you are demonstrating the games, you are telling the story at the same time. When telling the story, put yourself in the story. We are going, instead of saying you are going. Make yourself, the coach, a part of the adventure because they want to play with you too. There's really no need to say, let's pretend, because kids already do that. They don't need to pretend that a balloon is a beach ball. Just tell them that it's a beach ball. They'll roll with it. Try to be creative with the equipment. Try not to call a racket a racket, a ball a ball, a net a net. Rather, it's a rocket launcher, food for the lion, a mountain, things like that. 
And I've always found that if I can't figure out exactly what to call it, the kids certainly will. Remember, they live in very creative, imaginary worlds, and nothing is too far-fetched for them. They are there to have fun. Next, we wanted to make sure that everybody understands the reference codes for the activities and the different variations that you can use. I'm sure most of you know by now that there is a reference code for the activity found in the left-hand column of the lesson plan. That code matches with the game in the games compendium. There you can find the original version of the game, it may have been tweaked a little bit to fit the story, and also three other variations. Coaches often ask us how many times they can repeat a lesson. Remember, kids don't get tired of doing the same thing, they get tired of doing the same thing too long. Think about how many times a child will watch their favorite movie or listen to their favorite bedtime story again and again. So you can repeat the same story, but you can slightly change the activities. Or you can even vary the activities for the second time around within the same lesson. We know that coaches want to coach, but we do have to remember that when working with little kids, very often in terms of coaching, less is more. These little ones can only process so much information if anything at all. For each activity, we put in one simple tip. Often, if the kids can do that, they're doing really well. We only have one tip so that as coaches, we don't overload the kids with too much information. Also, if you have parents on court, this gives them one thing to focus on to help their child. Typically, they can either say too much, or more often, they're too afraid of what to say. This helps them feel comfortable coaching their kid, and again, everybody is working on the same thing. The set for school skills, the educational component, this is what separates Tennis Whiz from all the other programs out there. I can't tell you how many times after a first lesson, kids will walk off the court with their story, their activity sheet, their stickers, and parents will tell me, wow, this is so much more than just tennis. Here's the thing. We wanted to make this part easy for you. We didn't want you to feel like you had to be a preschool teacher to be able to do this. So after each activity is completed, you simply have to gather the students together and ask the question next to the S4S on the lesson plan. It's as easy as that. And as you know, the set for school skills are linked to what they're already learning about in preschool. So very often there's at least one child there who will know the answer. It's just as important to finish together as it is to begin together. Not only do you mark the end of the lesson, but you celebrate the success of all the students. As I always say, start strong, finish stronger. If you have time at the end of the lesson, it's great to be able to read the story aloud or play it with the MP3 off of a small speaker. You might not have time if you only have a 45 minute class, but if you want to stretch it to an hour, there's certainly enough time. One of the things that I do when I hand out stickers is I try to give the student a reason why they're receiving that sticker. Whether it was for good listening, or working hard that day, or maybe they had a great shot, but to really give meaning to it rather than simply just receiving a sticker. Finally, at the end of the lesson, we gather everyone together for the final cheer. I didn't realize how important it was until one class we almost didn't have enough time and the kids simply wouldn't leave the lesson until we all got together, put our hands in, and had a final cheer. They really enjoy celebrating the fact that they accomplished something and it's a great way for everybody to say goodbye. Finally, make sure the kids all walk away with their take-homes, the story and the activity sheet. 
Also, be sure that parents are aware of the MP3 stories and the extra downloads on the website. And remind them to visit Pinterest for more ideas of things to do with the kids that have to do with the lesson that they just had. Just to be sure that everyone can find all of the materials, once you log on to the website, find the Downloads tab at the top of the page. There you'll find a drop-down menu for lessons. And don't forget, there are a lot of other downloads available on the website too. Thank you everyone for taking out the time to watch this session. I hope that it helped you understand the structure of the lesson a little bit more. If you have any further questions, please feel free to email us anytime at info at And once again, thank you for all that you do to help make Tennis Whiz a success.